So many IoT devices are produced day by day, and we, as, we, as far as we have seen, none of them comes with the uh, standard algorithms like uh, lightweight block cipher standards or lightweight stream cipher standards or lightweight hash function standards and so on. We sometimes see IoT devices they don't which don't use uh, which don't use encryption at all. Sometimes they don't have any encryption. Sometimes they just use a hash function as if it is an encryption algorithm and so on. So this led me to think uh, about if we need a, a standard for these IoT devices. So do we need a lightweight crypto standard? So for this reason, this get to, uh, got together with industry and the academic community. And after these discussions, uh, it was realized that uh, the world needs a standard uh, that has to be used by everybody. So for this reason, NIST uh, started the process that, that is referred to as lightweight cryptography standardization process. And during this process, they published the re report, which is NIST internal report A114, titled Report on Lightweight Cryptography, which is very useful. And uh, after these uh, workshops and so on, they realized that the they should have the AES like competition to choose a lightweight cryptography standard. So, in this document, uh, there are some evaluation criteria are produced. These evaluation criteria can be divided into three categories like physical, performance, and security. In the physical case, the algorithms will be compared according to the area they are required on the hardware like gate equivalence or millimeter squares and they are compared with they will be compared with the memory they need ram or rom and the implementations are important for the evaluation both hardware and software and the energy in terms of fuel that the algorithm requires the performance is uh, will be compared on uh, with respect to latency, throughput, and power, so in terms of watts. But of course, we need security, so we, the NIST asked the crypto community to perform cryptanalysis on the candidate algorithms in terms of both theoretical way, like we will be considering minimum bit security or attack models, but also side channel resistance uh, is required because these algorithms will be deployed on mostly resource constraint devices. So here is the uh, timetable so far. So NIST held the first lightweight crypto workshop in July 2015. And afterwards, they published the draft version of the report that I just mentioned. And after the second lightweight cryptography workshop in October 2016, they got the uh, feedback from both the industry and the academia and they published the report in March 2017. So this report actually uh, mentions uh, the roadmap and submission requirement and evaluation criteria was uh, published in August 2018 and the candidate for the deadline for the candidates was February 2019. So this competition like standardization process received 57 algorithms and 56 of them are announced as the first round candidates in 18th April 2019. So crypto community tried to cryptanalyze these algorithms and uh, they measured their performances both on both software and hardware and so on. And in at 30 August 2019, NIST announced the second round candidates, which are uh, 32 algorithms. And uh, last year, they held the third lightweight crypto workshop in November 2019. And the following workshop, fourth lightweight crypto workshop, 
will be held in October, this October, but due to pandemic, uh, this will be a virtual workshop. So all of the workshops was held in uh, NIST campus so far, in uh, Gaithersburg, USA, but this time it will be held virtually. So as I mentioned, 32 algorithms made it to the second round. So these are the names of those 32 algorithms. And uh, we expect that uh, after the workshop, like around December, uh, we ex expect that NIST would announce the third round candidates. But of course, we don't know the number of the algorithms that will make it to the third round. And one important thing is that we don't know if the competition will have a single winner or a portfolio of winners. So this is really important, uh, mostly to the industry, because industry says that if you uh, announce four winners, then we, uh, most of the manufacturers have to put all of the four algorithms on the device. So that would make it pointless because the main idea of the lightweight design was to make these devices as small as possible. So most probably industry wants only a single winner. But of course, for the uh, algorithms that are competing, it will be nice if there will be more than one winner so that it will increase your chances of winning the competition. So NIST hasn't decided yet, but probably in, a, in the close future, we will know if there will be one winner or more than one winner. And we are expecting this competition to end in one or two years. But of course, due to pandemic, the timetable or the deadlines might be extended. So probably for the following two and three years, we'll be focusing on the cryptanalysis and the performance of these candidates so that NIST can choose a winner and announce it as the uh, lightweight standard. So to summarize, IoT devices are very different than each other, so it is hard to provide standards for all. Current device production does not focus on security. Many disasters happen in real life today, and uh, most of the devices that we analyze, most of the time does not have any uh, cryptographic security on them. The standardization process is going to take two to three years at least. Uh, producers should provide their own security solutions until IoT standards are available, which is actually dangerous. So actually, maybe we should uh, pause the IoT device production for some time until we have uh, good security, because otherwise many disasters can happen. We may need different lightweight ciphers for different purposes, but as, again, as I told you, uh, this is not what the industry wants. They want a single uh, cipher to, for every purpose. Due to their simplicity, lightweight designs may be weak against attack types that are not discovered yet. So this is why uh, we need a huge cryptanalysis effort to analyze these candidates. And finally, lightweight does not mean short key. Using short keys provides almost no security. And in my opinion, there's no need to use keys shorter than 128 bits.